welcome to part three. Now, in part two, I did say that I would give you another option on uh, the roof. Now, that is the roof that we actually completed in part two, uh, the beaver tile, beaver tail tile, sorry. And I said I'd give you an option on corrugated iron, which we shall do. Now, if I pull uh, the camera back, now. If anybody has just picked this video up and you want to know how I did all the framing, there will be a video link at the end of this video so that you can go and see how I actually did all the framing. But I will run through it very, very quickly. Now, I've got it all framed up as we did in the, uh, for the uh, beaver tile, tail tiles. Try saying that with these teeth. And Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready now to put the actual uh, roof beams in, which I've already got pre-cut with my nine mil spacers, which I should be getting on with in a second. Uh, a couple of things. I've actually raised the pitch of the actual roof. Now I've gone from uh, eight courses to twelve, and lifted up the sides by an extra two courses as well. And still kept it at four at the front, but it's just giving it that little bit more of a pitch compared ooh, compared to the first one, if you can see just there in the background. So I've given it a slight more pitch. The reason is I feel that the corrugated iron will look better at a slightly steeper angle uh, than the tiles. So with that all out of the way, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get on, get all these uh, beams fitted and give it a coat of uh, stain and then I'll be back to you and we'll get started with the corrugated iron. Right, all the roof beams have been put in, give them a coat of stain, well, a coat of wash should I say, just a uh, black wash uh, and a little bit of a brown wash as well, uh, nothing too spectacular. Now. The actual corrugated sheets need it so much to be actually fixed to. So I've actually cut some battens. Now these are uh, two mil by one mil. Uh, I've really pre given them a pre-wash so we can just glue them straight down. And on the little side pieces, it will actually take a full sheet. So there's going to be no problems either side. On the middle roof, it's going to be short. So we're going to need to over overlap them. So the battens on the middle roof will be one at the bottom, one directly at the top, and then we're going to do one halfway, and then I'm going to put one quarter of the way in between of each one like so uh, just guesstimate it because there's well if you if you want to measure it out and make it exact you can I'm just gonna guesstimate it and same with the sides uh, these are gonna have one at the bottom one at the top now on this back wall here I don't think uh, you can actually see that just turn it a little bit more on this back wall here because the roof goes up and right over on this back section you're going to need to actually glue two battens on top of each other uh, one on the back wall there and another one on top of it and this will then give you your height uh, for your little fall down for the actual corrugated iron to sit on on this one, I'm only going to go three because there's no need to do any more on that. So I'm going to do three on that one, and the same on this side. I'm going to move the camera again. We're going to do three, but this one sits under the wall, so it's going to be one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the middle. And we're just going to super glue them down no problems at all so I'm going to get them done 
get them glued on and I should be back in a second. Okay, all the battens are glued on and I'll just let you know that on the back here we had to put three battens on top of each other to actually make the corrugated sheeting uh, actually join something. So it's three pieces at the back. I very simply just cut all the ends off uh, with a pair of side cutters, nothing too fantastic. Now that is done. Now we're going to move our attention now to the corrugated iron. Right, a little bit of a discussion on the corrugated iron. Now, I went off and purchased this particular corrugated iron. It worked out at £7 and you get 15 pieces of corrugated plastic. Now, it's very nice, it's very, it looks good, but it has its downfalls. To me, it's too thick because it's made of styrene. Uh, the second problem is that it takes a lot to actually damage it. You need heat to bend this up. To make sensible looking bullet holes in it, it takes a long time, which I've tried. Uh, drills and heat and everything else and they never look right so all in all it's a very difficult item to work with so what I've actually come up with is because I was going to make a jig to make it out of foil and when I priced up the styrene, the half round styrene it worked out the price of uh, this particular corrugated iron so what I've devised is to make my own jig but using two sheets of the corrugated plastic uh, so we've actually made a jigger which very very easily works a quick demonstration a piece of foil this is just off one of the uh, fast food containers and all we do we use this like a press and just when we get the right way around and we just use this like a press so a couple of rubs up and down which starts to form it up you can get the drift So, so I've got that round the right now. Yeah, it just needs a little bit of pressure. I'm trying. I'm trying to be gentle here. I mean, you're, you're supposed to be. So all we do is we just keep rubbing it until we actually form our corrugated sheet now. Now our corrugated sheet in, in good blue Peter fashion. I have some here. I've already made. It does come out extremely well. It's nice and thin. The great thing about it is that it's it's very easy to damage and to make it look correct. You can bend it up; it will crease like the real thing because it is uh, metal. And when you put holes through it, it will tear and leave spikes on the other side, as if a bullet had gone through from whichever the direction you would like it to be done. So that is my solution at the moment to making corrugated iron now if i come across something uh cheaper quicker easier i will let you know but i think this is the best option to go for is to actually buy yourself a pack of uh, this corrugated iron and use it as your mold to make your foil one uh, there is other, going to be other uses for it, especially if you want to cut two pieces of this together, placing your corrugated uh, iron in between, squeezing it tight, and then you can actually cut that. Uh, have I got a pair of scissors? Yes, I've got a small pair of micro scissors there. And we'll just cut that off. So you're ready to use that that way and cut that off and then it's not going to deform the end too much which then you can easily, if it does deform, you can put it back into your jig 
and just press down and it's going to be back to there and I like the way that leaves that edge because if they cut it they would have cut it with I don't know what they would have cut it with in them days but they would have uh, probably hacked it and that's going to be my basis for my roof now I'm sorry I can't uh, give you a cheap and easy way out of the corrugated iron you can't I mean I could use cocktail sticks and things like that but it's not going to form it up as nicely as this will so it's a matter of spending out seven pounds you can spend out seven pounds buy a pack of this keep two back to make yourself a jig use it on your build but if you're going to go for corrugated iron and you're going to be doing uh, this whole farmyard uh, as well uh, you're going to be needing a lot of corrugated irons especially for the barn and the house and that so I think it's more feasible to actually go for that so that's how I'm doing my corrugated iron so now we'll get on and we'll get some pictures okay we're back with the building I uh, apologize I've already glued a piece down uh, I forgot to press the record button <laughs> and that's the reason why we've got one piece glued down right now very easy to fit as you can see uh, I'm using full lengths here uh, of the corrugated iron and it's just a matter of hooking it over laying it flat and gluing it and hopefully yes I did hit the record button this time so all we do is we just glue this as we go along nothing too mad or technical and that goes that way we we'll want a bit of glue along the inside edge like so and we just place that over and stick it down now the overhang it doesn't matter you can make it as long as short as you like because this uh, corrugated iron was made as a temporary uh, roofing solution uh, but it very quickly became permanent so it doesn't matter you can do it how you want and how you feel it looks right now what I've actually done with this is I've given it a coat of ordinary grey primer yeah one side I've given a wash because that is the side that is facing down and it's going to be difficult to get to at a later stage so I just thought I'd tell you that now cutting a strip is very very easy now if you use uh, a couple of the pieces of styrene corrugated plastic that you bought place it in then with your scissors you can actually cut along that edge reasonably tidily all the way along sorry I'm not showing that in shot like so and it gives that nice uneven cut effect move that over one more oh we cut that too short there you go, but not a problem. We'll use that somewhere else, and we'll get another bit. But you can get the, you can get the the understanding that. I mean, I can actually cut that back down again, and you'll get your fit. And the uneven edge would be that way because I'm not quite sure. I think they would have cut these with like some sort of side cutters or tin tin snips or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, if we were using it modern day it would be a disc cutter on it so I think it probably would have been hacked somehow with some sort of uh, saw but I'm going to get this one finished off and glued and I'm going to do exactly the same on this one on the centre roof I'm going to use half sheets but I'll come back to you on that one I'm going to use half sheets and then another sort of half sheet on top uh, to give that uh, lined effect 
but I will come back to you on that one. I will get this one fit, fitted fitted down, and this one fitted down, and then I should come back to you. Okay, I've put the corrugated iron on both sides now, and to be quite honest with you, I think it looks pretty cool. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to start on the main roof. Now, I'm just going to cut some half sheets, and I'm just going to glue them all the way across to that side and then I'll come back to you and we'll go on with the second half now I've got that uh, all the bottom bits on oh, clean it up there, bit of damage uh, and now what I'm going to do is be cutting pieces and just fitting them on the top over like that all the way along again and that's going to give us that nice join but I'm not going to be too careful along there because I do want to see a few gaps because it never did really sit 100% flush so I'm going to be leaving actually it might even be twisting them a little bit as well just to give that not an irregular irregular pattern so I'm going to get on with that and I'll show you back with you in a second okay as you can see it's all completed uh, it looks all right I'm quite happy with it and the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to give the whole thing a wash just my normal black uh, paint with thinners which is 75% uh, uh, thinners and 25% black paint now I'm just going to give that a, a, a coat all over and I shall be back with you shortly okay that coat of black wash that I put on earlier has dried and it's given, I, I feel it's given a really good, nice effect. I let it run down and it accumulated in these areas here, uh, which makes it look very dirty and grubby, how it should be. Now, everything now is artistic license and that is up to you. I mean, I might be doing a little bit of rusting on this. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait until... I get the the whole thing, uh, the barn, the outbuilding, other outbuilding done and finished, and then I'll probably weather them all in together, uh, accordingly, should I say? Now, like I say, I haven't done no more on the roof, but I have put the door on and finished that off. I did say there would be a link at the end of this video. Uh, that link shows you as well how I did the door. The framing up on the actual roof because I, I covered all that in in the video uh, with the tiles uh, on the back wall here I got some curb edgings glued them together to make my copings uh, just to finish that off and I think that looks all right and I'm quite happy with that so that is it that is how I do the corrugated iron I hope it's been useful to you and I hope to see you on the next one which is the barn build and what I'll do I'll leave you with some close-up pictures so because they're always better pictures than seeing the video so I'll leave you with some close-up pictures and uh, thank you and we'll see you on the next one